Are you thinking about installing electric cooling fans on your car? This time I'm removing an old mechanical fan to make way for two electric cooling fans controlled by a thermostat. So what I'm using here are two 12 inch fans. So both of these fans are rated at 12 volts of course and 80 watts of power output. So if we take 80 watts and divide it by 12 volts, that's gonna give us the amperage load that these fans are gonna pull during normal operations. So it's a little over six and a half. I'm gonna round up and say it's seven amps per fan when they're running, so 14 amps total between the two fans. It is important to figure all this stuff out, especially when you're dealing with something like cooling fans that, that are going to pull a high amp load on your car's electrical system. So knowing that each one of these fans is gonna draw about seven amps, I know that the wiring kit that I have to install these, the relay kit, is gonna work out just fine. I've got two relay kits, one for each fan. Each is a 50 amp relay, and I'm going to be installing each one of those also with a 30 amp inline fuse. So really even just one relay and fuse should be more than enough to power both the fans, but I'm gonna put a relay on each one individually. So with using one on each, that should be more than enough. It should never have any problems with, with it drawing too high of a load for the relay or the fuse. And if it does, then it's gonna pop the fuse before the relay burns out. Something else in regard to wiring before we go any further, it's not actually that difficult. I know wiring is one of the scariest things for most people, but it's really not that bad, especially if you take the time to pre-plan and figure out everything that you're going to do ahead of time. And that's really going to pay off later in the process. For example, when I was planning out this upgrade, there were a couple of things that I noticed with the wiring and the relay kits that I wanted to change for my application. First, each relay kit came with a small circuit breaker like this with dual terminals sticking out. Personally, I don't like having exposed positive terminals in the engine bay if I can help it. So each one of these would be hot and could easily be ground out if I stuck this in there that way. So as I said before, I'm going to use a 30 amp fuse instead. So instead of using the circuit breaker, I ran out and got just a 30 amp inline fuse pigtail. Um, so I'm going to splice this into the relay harness as well. The second thing I noticed here Here's the original, one of the original relay kits. There's one short wire and in the instructions it says that this needs to go to the radiator fan itself. However, I'm going to end up installing these relays much closer to the batteries on the inner fender. So the short wire is not going to reach the fan. And really the other red wire that they've given us here, which the instructions say should go to the battery, is the same gauge as the the wire that's going to go to the fan. So it actually doesn't matter too much as far as that's concerned and really the from the battery to the fan is going to be the same distance no matter what. So what I want to do is swap out the short wire and the long wire. That may not even be necessary um, depending upon the relays but I just wanted to make sure the one that's going to be connected to the battery is the one that's intended to be connected to the battery. But this is actually a real simple switch um, change to make. You just have to de-pin two of the connectors in here and the wires and swap them out. So I've actually already done that over here with this other harness, which you can't really see in the video there. But so there is the inline fuse. I've added that to this harness that I've modified already. And then I've swapped out the long and short positive cables in this one. So. I just need to do that to this other one here as well. So to depin these, it's real simple. There's a little tab in here that you have to push down. And once you push down on that, you can pull out on the wire and it comes straight out just like that. Real easy. Also, one of the best tools for this, they make specially depinning tools, but actually what works best for me are little copper staples that come in packaging. So if you flatten those out, those are about the perfect size for a lot of wiring harnesses to stick in there and depin things really well. The last thing that needed to be changed with the relay harnesses is each one comes with an activation wire and a trigger wire. That, that might not be the proper term for it, but one wire runs to the ignition and that energizes the, the relay 
and then there's another wire that's going to go to the thermostat that came with the kit and when that hits the temperature that switch is going to close which is going to ground out that wire so that's going to trigger the relay and turn the fans on but since i have two relays i didn't want to run two sets of wires to both locations so on the one relay here for the switching wire and the activation trigger wire whatever we're going to call those i shortened both of those up and what i'm going to do then is splice those into the wires on the second harness so that only one wire is going to go to the ignition switch and one wire is going to go to the thermostat and that's going to control both of the relays and both of the fans so now i just need to finish modifying the second wiring harness here and then I can work on installing the wiring into the truck. So the last thing I need to modify here before I can work on installing all of the wiring and then the fans into the truck is the fans themselves. So these fans came with these connectors on the end of the wiring, which I do not have any more of these types of connectors. Plus, uh, you know, they're just cheap little connectors there to begin with. So to make sure that this is removable, if I take the radiator out, that I can disconnect the fan from the wiring, I went ahead and got a little two pin flat wiring connector so this is kind of like trailer wiring or actually I think that's what this is meant to be for but it's got the two little ends that connect nicely there so here's the original one the other fan I've already cut and spliced in the end of that I went ahead and just cut the, uh, the little wiring harness that I got in half Half of it goes onto the fan like this. And then the other half, I made another little partial harness here. And the red wire is going to go to the power wire in the relay wiring. And the brown wire here is gonna be the fan ground wire. So I'll have two ground wires when I'm done with both of these. And we'll put another end on there and just ground that out to somewhere on the chassis. So. Since I already have one of them done, I just need to make the other one the same. And then this will all be ready to install. Another thing here real quick, if you are changing the ends on this or you're doing any custom wiring for the fans, um, where you're going to have an end like this that is directional, you know, you can only put it on there one way. You want to make sure that you install this the correct way so that your fans pull air through the radiator and not push it forward. If you hook up the positive and the negative backwards, then your fans are gonna be pushing air forward through the radiator and that's not good, the, everything's not gonna work right. For these fans, there's a blue wire and a black wire. I've already checked this ahead of time that the black wire is the ground and the blue wire is the positive for them to pull air properly, so. They're going to be up against the radiator like this on the inside and airflow needs to come this way. So I've already double checked all that. Alright, so up next to continue installing the new fans, we need to remove the old fan. First thing here is, I already removed the airbox to clear out this space and give me some room. Then you're probably going to need to unbolt and remove your current fan shroud. Be careful, here. Be careful here not to damage anything, especially the radiator. Alright, so there's the old fan and clutch. Now you can see down in there, with the fan and the upper shroud removed. Just went ahead and uh, screwed the pulley back on there. Make sure you put all those back in there or your pulley and belt will fall off because your old fan was holding that on. So, Also for the temperature sensor, that's going to go right 
there. See that plug in the back of the water pump? Where on some models that's, you have an outlet there going to your heater core and uh, on my setup it's not used. I already double checked that that is the correct size for what I need for the temperature sensor. So I'm gonna pull that plug out and the temperature sensor is gonna go right in there. Okay, so I've got the fans all installed and wired up here. Fans are on the radiator, all the wiring's in. My two inline fuses for the power are connected to the positive terminal of the battery there, like I talked about before. For the ground wire for the fans, I just connected it to the inner fender over here. The one thing you want to watch out for that I did discover in the process of doing this and testing after I hooked everything up was my relays were clicking, but the fans were not coming on because the ground connection was not very good over here. So I had to work on that a little bit. And after I got that to connect a little bit better, the fans kick on no problem. As I mentioned before, um, I went ahead and used that plug in the back of the water pump to install the temperature switch that came with the kit. I did only use one of them. Each relay kit came with its own temperature switch, but I only needed one since I spliced those wires together earlier on. So that's there. One other thing that I did notice in testing this with this switch, the temperature range on this is 185 to 200 degrees, or actually 200 to 185 degrees. So what that means is this switch doesn't close to kick the fans on until the water temperature reaches 200 degrees. And then they run and kick back off once it cools it to 185 degrees. That's a little warmer than I like. Um, I also have a 180 degree thermostat installed in this vehicle. So what I'm going to do is go back. You can order different temperature ranges for these temperature switches. So I'm going to order one that kicks on at 185 degrees and then off at 170. So that's going to be a better match for my 180 degree thermostat. And I live in Florida and it's hot. So I like things to run a little bit cooler if at all possible. So um, it, I did verify that this works and the fans will kick on. For the other wire, the switched ignition source, I tied into the windshield wipers over here. There's a yellow wire that goes to the wiper control board that is a switched 12 volt ignition source. So that's where I tied in. Uh, people say you can also tie into the coil. Obviously that's a switch source as well, but since that's ignition, I don't like to mess with that or tie into that if at all possible, even though I don't think it would affect it at all. So um, anyway, everything works there. Um, something else too in regard to the air conditioning, since this had a mechanical fan before, it did not have any way to kick fans on when the air conditioning gets turned on. So um, right now the fans will not run when I turn the AC on. They, they'll only kick on once the switch closes and it sees that water temperature of 200 degrees. A couple different ways to deal with that. What I'm going to do at some point in the future is go back and add a trinary switch to the air conditioning system and that will allow the fans to come on whenever the air conditioning is turned on. So in the meantime what I did is I went ahead and ran another wire inside the truck to a switch which is a switched ground source. So when I have the ignition on if I hit that switch inside it automatically kicks the fans on. So I have complete control over when they're running and that way when I turn the air conditioning on I can hit that switch and make sure that the fans are drawing air across both the condenser and the radiator. And over here on the fender is where I went ahead and installed my relays. So it's actually a pretty factory looking location other than the mess of wires that I still need to clean up a little bit. You never would have known that I added those relays. So at some point here I need to do something for a radiator shroud. I may put the top of the old one back on for the time being, but the fans are all good and they do work. So ignition and then just temporarily I've got this little switch down here. Click that and the fans run. So, th so there you have it guys. That's how you can add dual electric cooling fans to your older vehicle that had a mechanical fan. I hope to see a slight improvement in gas mileage. I've read about a few other people that have done this upgrade and seen a slight boost to their miles per gallon, so that would be nice. And then of course, as it's been tested on the dyno many times, not having the mechanical fan spinning around there attached to the engine does free up a little bit of horsepower. So there you have it. I hope this was helpful. I'll post back with an update in the future to see if I've gotten any improvement in miles per gallon or to see if I notice any improvement in the pickup of the vehicle or the acceleration after adding the new electric fans here. 
If you like this video, click the thumbs up down below. It helps me out. And if you haven't yet, make sure you click that red subscribe button down below. Click the notification bell. Make sure that you don't miss out on any of the future videos for my projects or any of my how-to videos on improving your vehicles. And I'll see you next time.